Tom Brady went and had himself a roast, right? I mean, what, what, a, what a Sunday night that was. I'm absolutely shocked about how that went down. I mean, it was, I was, you know, I was very I think Tom skeptical. Brady might have been shocked too. <laughs> I was skeptical about it, but boy, within the first like five minutes, it was no hold bar. It was, it was quite the night. Yeah, I, it was pretty crazy. It was one of those things where, like uh, you guys just said, no holds barred. But the first five minutes, it really felt like Tom Brady signed up for the roast without actually knowing what a roast was. Uh, and it was definitely must-see television. So if you are listening and you have not seen this roast, go to Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, uh, borrow someone's password and account. Watch this roast. Get some popcorn. Get a drink. It's like three hours long. But you really should watch this entire thing. Look, I mean, Brady... I don't I don't think he knew breach. I think you're right. I don't think he I think he knew what a roast was, but generally assumed that although Sully, his remarks at the end of it, his you could tell who had jokes written for them, by the way. Like Brady had jokes written for him, Gronk had jokes written for him. Edelman seems like they definitely like helped him with a couple, but he like mostly did it. Gronk even said during his, he's like, ha, 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 I made that one up myself as if to say like all the other ones were written for him. Brady's clearly written for him. And so like he had to have practiced them. So he had to have known what kind of stuff was going to be said. And he, he like, was cussing too much. Yeah. I mean, it, it was within like the first five minutes, we, you know, of course, you know, Kevin Hart did a great job hosting and he kind of like set the stage. I mean, they were talking about, you know, the karate instructor with his ex-wife Giselle. I mean, they were really throwing, you know, they weren't really pulling any punches. I mean, the divorce thing, the divorce thing got brought out in the first three minutes. Yeah. It's like, oh, I mean, hey, 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 hey. And that's when I kind of knew that, okay, this is not going to be some kind of, you know, PG-13 type of roast that inevitably won't be funny. There really was, I mean, there was a few things that were probably, you know, on the no-fly list. But ultimately, he opened himself up to any sort of punch being thrown his way. It was, you know, you credit to him, honestly, for it, like putting up with it. Because like you said, Breach, I, I don't think that he knew exactly what it was going to be. And you have all these professional comedians coming out just absolutely swinging at all of the news items throughout his career. Yeah, and I think one of the things with us as viewers and people who follow the NFL and Tom Brady's career is that you thought, eh, you know, I've, if you've watched the roast on Comedy Central, they get pretty crazy, and you're thinking, eh, it's Tom Brady. They'll probably tone it down a little bit. I'll tune in. I'll check it out for, like, the first 30 minutes, see what happens, and see if it's worth watching. And like you guys just said, within the first 10 minutes, it was, like, jaw-dropping. Oh, my God, nothing is off limits. Uh, and it was one of those things where it really felt like maybe Brady wasn't expecting any Giselle jokes, but I felt like Kevin Hart throwing out the first Giselle joke just from there and from there it just went totally off the rails. Nothing was off limits. Make a joke about anything. Uh, of course, when I say nothing was off limits, I mean one thing was off limits, right, right Brinson? Yeah, and I think we actually have a clip of this because Tom Brady did pop up and say, don't say that bleep again. I don't, I don't think know we if, have I don't know if we could play the clip. Oh, legally. we can't play the clip. Oh, sorry. My bad. I thought I, I was under the impression we could play. I thought we had one clip because it was newsy. I'm sorry. Um, Tom Brady, it was uh, Jeff Ross who absolutely got blistered and like definitely reacted a little too like, like he like, I mean, has anybody ever enjoyed it, it's like the only thing he has left in his life are ropes jeff ross i mean and they made fun of him for that it's like this is all you do bro and it really is all he does they call him the roast master he you know he came out as um and there were lots of aaron hernandez jokes too by the way i mean i mean tom brady made one <laughs> i mean my god uh but brady made you know, a 9-11 the, joke i mean it was literally everything you could possibly joke about got joked about yeah tom brady made a 9-11 joke that is that was unexpected it was like um, the kicker too it was like right at the end you're like oh okay yeah yeah it was like it was like drew bledsoe got hit by two jets i mean it was it was, it was really like a tough i mean but the, but the one thing that got uh jeff ross made a joke about tom brady giving robert Kraft a massage and brady popped up and walked over and said don't say that bleep again on the hot mic and you can hear like lots of stuff being picked up and apparently Kevin Hart kept referencing like what Gronk was saying. Like um, when Nikki Glazer said, uh, it's like, Tom, you've lost $30 million in crypto. He's like, even Gronk knew not to do that. He told you that no, <laughs> what's the line? It's like that money, no good. <laughs> like Gronk knows that money, no good. And Gronk apparently was like, yeah, yeah, I did say that. <laughs> like, Let me ask you guys a question about the, the Ross thing though. Do you think that that was a genuine reaction by Brady or 
I'm like 30 or 40% like that may, may have been staged because you're doing a roast. Robert Kraft is in the audience. Anybody that's attending, especially when you're that lower bowl, you are liable to be picked on by any one of these roasters, especially Robert Kraft. You don't make that joke. Like, of course, someone was going to make that joke. I almost wonder if they were, if it was by design to say, hey, we're going to do this in like the first like 10 minutes of the roast, the first guy up and Jeff Ross. And Brady says, okay, I just got to like, you know, pretend and play the game and say, don't say mm. that bleep again. I, I do wonder if. So, I mean, it, like all of these, all of these people had their, their jokes and their like, ri- their, their stuff all written out on the teleprompter. You know, like there was a, you could, you caught a glimpse of it's like big in the back, like a huge in the back, easy to read. And like they were joking how Gronk had like, they had to like do phonetic, like spell out like words phonetically for Gronk in order to, um, in, in, in order to like get him to like properly read the teleprompter because he is you know, that dumb. Um, it just used that Gronk, I guess. So my thing on that, Sully, would be do we think that to, to, to bolster your conspiracy theory is like, all right, because all these, in other words, all these people like talked about what was going to be done ahead of time. Like they, there's, if you follow the people, like there's some. Uh, I think she was actually working for CBS Sports Network. I can't remember her name, but she was like in the control room, like one of the producers, one of the one of the staff writers. So they help they help write all these jokes. They help plan the show. I would guess that that Brady in the meetings was like, I don't want to have any Robert Kraft massage jokes. Like, I, like I, I would like that to be off limits. Like, just don't do that to him. Um, and that they were like, well, what about this? I mean, I'm just this is the th- this is my theory. It's like they're like, what about this? Jeff Ross is going to make one. You pop up and say, don't say that bleep again. And then as a result, it's like, okay, now nope, now everybody's going to take because because if I were a comedian following, like you tell me, Nikki Glaser wasn't going to get one of those off. Like I mean, which. <laughs> uh, that was a, no pun intended honestly but the um you're telling me that like like she or something like some of the other the, the things that other people said you're telling me they were just like like just uh, accidentally omitted like like th- that section of, of bob craft stuff i mean that's a freebie so yeah that, that does make sense that maybe it was like a, all right tom is willing to do this but that this is the one thing he wants off limits well, and I think the other part of that is that, you know, when we watched the Academy Awards where Will Smith goes on stage and punches Chris Rock, which was not stage. And so that's what makes you think, man, was the stage? Was this not stage? And look, I watched that part like three times because I really I, I was thinking the same way Solly was, but I couldn't decide how I felt about it. But I really felt like Jeff Ross's reaction was genuine. He was like, huh. Like he gave an uncomfortable laugh and then pointed at Kraft, like, look, he's out there having fun, Tom, just have fun. And so, I, I mean, I, it felt genuine it, to the point where maybe Brady wasn't supposed to do that, but Prince's theory makes sense. Yeah, he also did come back and say, he's like, oh, Mr. Kraft, I really appreciate for everything you've done for the Jewish community. And like, he seemed to be sort of flustered and, and, and trying to 